Coming up on the Met Report, MSU Denver is flushing away discrimination one bathroom at a time. Biking, skating, running, oh my, another way to scoot your way to campus. Goal! Raina Banks is rating in some goals. The Met Report starts now. Joining us for another semester of the Met Report, I'm Yek Deskandari. And I'm Haley Corey. Feeling safe on campus is extremely important to students, and bathroom safety has been a hot issue lately. The Women and Gender Center at CU Denver has been working for weeks to get an all-gender bathroom built in one of the busiest areas on campus, the Tivoli. So this is a project that we started about 40, 40 weeks ago. What we ended up doing was renovating a custodial closet that was here into what you see here as a bathroom. A new downtown eco-friendly transportation option has opened up new lanes for the students of Auraria campus. You may have caught sight of the new electric scooters zipping around downtown. These scooters are 100% battery powered, making them clean, efficient, and easy to use. The company Lime debuted a fleet of 500 scooters for the downtown Denver area this spring. The scooters continue to make a dent on the downtown traffic. If you'd like to try out a Lime scooter, download the app, set up a profile, find a scooter, and you're halfway to your destination. I actually bike to campus and then I ride these around when I see them. Oh, it's just fun, man. You know, like uh, it gets you around quickly and it's a good time. You know, yeah, it cools you off even if, when it's hot outside, it's a nice breeze, you know. So. Well, Beanie, um, those scooters are really interesting. I might even use one to uh, get to class. What about you? Oh, yeah, it sounds like a great way to get to class, but hopefully it's not raining when I use it. That's true. Uh, Nathaniel, what does the weather look like for this week? Uh, we'll just go through this really quick. Current conditions right now, we're sitting at 70 degrees with a southeast wind at 17 miles an hour and dew point at 33. Again, beautiful conditions out there if you can do it. Today, so far, 77 is going to be our high with a south-southeast wind at 60 miles per hour. Again, day planner, gorgeous day ahead of us. 4 p.m. 76, 8 p.m. 64. If you can get out there, I would definitely recommend it. Low tonight, 53, clear and wind with a south clear with wind out of the south at 21 miles per hour. Our top stories right now are cooler temperatures are on the way. Extended outlook and photo of the week. Please stay with us. By now we've all seen the political ads on TV and we simply can't wait to, to vote so no longer we have to see them. Not only is it important to vote, but, but to know how to register to vote. The Met Report's Brian Minship has more. When we head to the polls this November, we will not be electing a new president. But that doesn't mean there are not issues still at stake this upcoming election. Some of the Colorado issues we'll be voting on range from electing a new governor to school funding and even an oil and gas drilling setback. Now, while we all have our own opinions on these issues and even more, the only way we can really have our voices heard is if we get out and vote. And that starts with registering. Now, if you're like most students we talk to here on campus, do you plan on voting in this upcoming election? Yes. I am. Uh, yes, sir. I do indeed. Yes, I do. You're probably already registered to vote. But if you aren't, people like Elsa Beth Deguinia are here to help. If you are a Colorado resident and you have a Colorado ID, you need that to be able to register to vote. If you are a Colorado resident without a Colorado ID, you just need the last four digits of your social security to be able to register to vote. Elsabeth is an intern with Defend Our Future, working to help get students like us invested in the American political system, especially when it comes to issues like climate change. Young people historically don't vote. We're not trying to change the conversation. We're trying to change who's having the conversation. We all have our own thoughts about issues such as how best to deal with climate change or what to do about health care. And the best way to get involved and have your voice heard is by filling in those bubbles on Election Day. But don't just take my word for it. It is important for your voice to be heard and your voice should be heard, which is why you need to maybe do a little bit more research, become a little bit more aware so you're able to find the right candidate for you. Everybody should vote. I mean, especially if you're a person of color or a woman. Um, others who came before you did fight so that you could have that privilege to vote. So. For the Met Report, I'm Brendan Mincheff. College can be stressful, so the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences is hosting its Super Success Series. This series of workshops will provide students with the skills needed to succeed in college. From the moment you accept your high school diploma, 
one already knows the next chapter into adulthood as a college freshman will be difficult. Whether it's getting used to new faces, professors, or even finding your class, we want to know what it's like for each student transitioning to the college life. We decided to get an up close and personal look on a freshman's perspective on what it is truly like starting something over. The hardest part would have to be getting used to the like the new location environment, um, being separated from all the people I was like crowded with in high school and having to see like a lot of new faces and being off on my own practically now. Probably just getting acclimated to a huge campus for sure. I mean it's a big place way bigger than my school and I went to a big one so it just kind of was something different. We then asked if they preferred the college life or high school life. I prefer the college life because it's more free. You can do basically whatever you want. I went from wearing uniforms every day to like expressing yourself in a way. We then proceeded to ask what advice would they have given their senior year selves. Take a lot more college classes because they're free and if you mess up they're free and you have all the teachers that you've known for you know your entire high school life and that's a lot easier than switching it out for a brand new teacher and they're free. Keep looking forward, don't let people weigh you down and don't let people hold you back from what you can actually achieve. Put in more effort to improve my GPA, that way I could have gotten like more scholarships and stuff, but yeah. This is Victoria Perez Castro for the Met Report. There was more traffic than usual because of an unusual car crash. And Denver will be the new destination for this brand's headquarters. Biker Gyms, brother. <laughs> Ballerina. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Drop the baby. <laughs> It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm OK. My name is Asha Ida Bell, America. Let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Sex trafficking is about the kidnapping and trafficking of humans for the purpose of sexual abuse that including sexual enslavement. It is also the most familiar form of human trafficking, but many people don't actually know that. I question students' knowledge towards this sure. issue. Uh, and one way that uh, someone can be, become more aware of them is just read, read the newspapers more often and be more into the articles that are not just focused on the U.S. and politics, try to go out of the politics and find out bigger problems that are going on. like human trafficking, you could just search it up if you want. There'll be more articles that you never even read of about that would just be like, well, this is still happening and it's 2018 and it continues to grow. Asking girls or anybody for help, like saying that they lost their dog or helping them to like grab something or like now they're like texting you and telling you like somebody complimented you on this app and then when you click on the link, it like takes your location down so they can come and snatch. About sex trafficking. Honestly, I really don't know much about it um, except for like little things I've read mm -hmm. um, online or 
from yeah, mostly online mm -hmm. or like from TV shows and such, but other than that, I really don't know much. Okay. Yeah. Though it may be an uncomfortable subject, people are against the matter. According to the 2016 Global Slavery Index, about 57,700 people in the USA, which include undocumented individuals and citizens, are victims of sex trafficking. Increased dramatically in the Denver metro area, we got to take a, a peek behind the curtain of this hot new trend, and we got to meet the movers, makers, and the game masters. So what does an average day look like for a game master? An average day consists of making sure that the rooms are ready for customers and watching and making sure if there's any bookings. Um, it's a lot of customer service and making sure that you're smiling when people come in, that you're greeting them. What kind of skills does it take to be an effective game master? I would say that the number one skill you need to be a game master is problem solving. We have lots of props that break that need to be fixed pretty quickly. That's a huge problem for us. We also have to understand how to explain problems to other people, which counts as a problem solving skill. Um, and also definitely a lot of patience. Sometimes people don't understand the things that you're telling them uh, about as quickly as you do, and that's because you have more experience with the games than they do. I think the most unique thing is that you're bringing people entertainment without being an entertainer. I have, it's funny to watch people play the rooms and I think that's a unique aspect too is you're watching people problem solve and you get to see lots of different ways of solving problems and I think that's a really cool aspect of the games as well. The stakes are relatively high because our games are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination and they really want an experience, that's what they're paying for. It just takes a large amount of skill to actually reset these rooms and do them correctly. So, I mean, that I don't think people understand the effort it goes into, honestly. I just want to welcome you back here to Met Media, and I'm Sue Meteorologist Nathaniel Ortega. We're just going to be going through your three day forecast here really quick. As you can see, Friday and Saturday are not really much in the way of any rain or clouds clear throughout the majority of the state. Yeah, just not really much to see here in the way of any weather. Yeah, so for your temperatures at 1 p.m., Denver's going to be sitting at 71, 74 in Littleton, as you can see. As we roll through this time, Saturday at 7 a.m., it's going to be 52 in Denver and 55 in Littleton. And again, as we roll this on Saturday at around 6.05, Denver's going to be at 80, 81, and 83 in Littleton. And yeah, so as we roll through this, again, Sunday, 7 a.m., 55, and then 58 in Littleton. So a really nice Sunday morning. If you can get out there, definitely enjoy it if you can. So for tomorrow, 86 will be our high, sunny with a wind out of the east at 8 miles per hour, shaping up to be a really nice day. And as far as your seven-day forecast, Monday and Tuesday look to be the best chances for rain. 64 is going to be the high with a low of 48, so it'll start to definitely feel like fall a lot more in the area. And as far as pictures, I had a chance to go up to Kenosha Pass last weekend. Uh, this was a picture up there. Colors are in their prime. If you can get up there, I would definitely recommend it. And if you have any cool photos, videos, please share it with us on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be right back. Fall is right around the corner, and Edge Restaurant and Bar is hosting this year's Larimer Square Fall Fashion Show. Some of the retailers will, that will be gracing the runway with this season's hottest trends include John Atencio, Haley Grace, and Mountain Khakis, among others. The event will take place on Thursday, September 27th, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Entry is free, so you don't have to think twice about attending. E-cigarette sales have, in, have increased substantially in the last five years, but the FDA is now cracking down on the illegal marketing to sales to children. The FDA has given the popular e-cigarette brand Juul 60 days to prove it's working to decrease use and appeal to children. The FDA argues the company has misled its, cu its customers into thinking the product is safe alternative to smoking and the device has become a popular fad among high school and college students. The science has not been yet been determined on the long-term health effects of vaping. A lot of the kids that I knew vaped, that's when I started vaping, was in high school. Um, you could basically like buy it from other kids. Uh, kids would be vaping in the bathrooms all the time. I think cigarettes are gross, personally. 
Our next story covers the controversial public opening of a new wildlife refuge near Denver that opponents claim may still be contaminated by radioactive dust particles. Saturday, September 15th, 2018, marks the opening day of the Rocky Flats Wildlife Refuge. The 5,237-acre site encompasses over 10 miles of trails on land that once housed a nuclear weapons production facility. Operational between 1952 and 1992, the site produced plutonium triggers for nuclear bombs and other weapons. During this time, a series of fires and leaks contaminated the area with radioactive dust. Rocky Flats is located 15 miles northwest of Denver. Colorado's Department of Health and Environment declared the site safe for recreation in 2005. I'm here at Candelas, a neighborhood built right next to Rocky Flats. Some of the neighbors here are concerned about the site and its toxic legacy. Local advocacy groups are worried contamination from the site may still be present. They say flooding in 2013 may have disturbed the site, uncovering radioactive dust. Although it's still unclear whether or not there's contamination here at Rocky Flats, one thing's for sure, many recreation enthusiasts will take that risk for views like this. My name's Jake, this has been the Met Report, signing off. aquí para invitarlos a que miren su programa Otra Onda y déjenme les platico por qué tenemos entrevistas con artistas locales música en vivo, tips de belleza y muchas muchas cosas más y si todavía quieren aún más razones para verlos aquí las tienen Thanks for joining us on the Met Report. Bienvenidos a Studio Noticiero TV Met. Thanks for joining me here on Student Corner. It's the Nightly Met. And welcome to MSU Denver Lab. At Metropolitan State University at Denver, our mission is to provide high-quality, accessible education that prepares our students for successful careers, postgraduate education, and lifelong learning in a global and technological society. Our values of diversity, access, and community help us provide opportunities for our students from all over the globe. In fact, we've just been named a diversity champion by Insight into Diversity Magazine for 2016. Because at MSU Denver, we believe in transforming lives. Stand on the edge of the train station platform. Drive around the room, gets at a level crossing. Run across the tracks between the platforms. They may not rhyme, but they're quite possibly the dumbest ways to die. There's a million dumb ways to die. Don't let it be around buses and trains. Be safe around buses and trains. A message from RTD. So many dumb ways to die. Hello everyone, Marcela Chavez here with the latest in gossip, music, and a little bit of everything. And it's finally Friday and the fall season is arriving tomorrow, which means our wardrobes need to be updated. That's right, for this fall winter season, the big coats and jackets are back in trend. The same happens with the plaid and houndstooth patterns, as well as the, as the pin stripes to help us short people look taller. Now, speaking of colors, burgundy and maroon tones are the favorite ones. And of course, don't forget the orange, mustard, yellow, and neutral early colors. As always, boots, leather, and warm cardigans. Well, it is time to put these summer, summery clothes away for now. Now, another excited event coming up this winter is the Super Bowl, and for those of who don't necessarily love football but do love the Pepsi halftime show, well, there has been some controversy about a rumor saying that Maroon 5 will perform at the show, something that hasn't been confirmed yet by the band's manager. Cardi B and Travis Scott are on the list too. So it looks like we have to keep waiting for this one. All we know is that we Super Bowl will be on, on February the 3rd at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. 
Personally, I still can't forget Justin Timberlake's Super Bowl performance last year. And now, unfortunately, in entertainment, everything cannot be happy stories. Chinese celebrity Fan Bingying has been reported after the release of the 2017-18 China film and television star Social Responsibility Report. Fan who has appeared in the films such as X-Men, Days of the Future, past score, the lowest of 100 celebrities assessed for the social responsibility. This assessment was based on three major factors, professional work, charitable work, and ethical integrity. Fan was ranked last due to suspicious that the celebrity committed tax evasion during the Jin Yang contract deal. What several media outlets have heavily censored the news of fans' disappearance. Several media outlets in China have stated that the actress is under control and will accept the legal decision. Well, this is really sad news, but for now, keep tuned because sports is next. Don't be like this guy. Obey the pedestrian mall signs around campus for your safety and the safety of others. Here's Auraria police officer Jordan Hefner to explain. Yeah, so the dismount zones are for safety purposes. Um, we do it just because there's so much foot traffic through those areas. Um, we don't want people on bikes and scooters and skateboards weaving in and out of people. People get hurt that way. Um, we don't want you to get hurt. We don't want the people around you to get hurt. If you're riding your bike, just get off and walk, um, same with skateboards, pick them up. We do ask you to stop, please stop. Uh, so we're not doing it to try and hinder your day in any way, we're not trying to be mean. You will get a ticket, we can give you a ticket for it, and there is a fine attached to that. What's up everyone, I'm Tony Almanza here to bring you the latest in MSU Denver sports. The women's soccer team looked great as they took down our MAC rivals New Mexico Highlands and Pueblo last week. The Roadrunners looked great as they shut down 23rd ranked CSU Pueblo 2-0. The women played amazing as Erica Torres defended the net allowing nothing through. Erica had 8 saves in this game, meanwhile Raina Banks led the offense making it look easy while scoring twice on the Thunderwolves. I'll have more on Banks later on. The men's soccer team also performed well in their last homestand, defeating Dixie State, making this a back-to-back -back victory for the Roadrunners. The Roadrunners' offense dominated, scoring four goals in the game. MSU Denver will be back on the road this weekend as they take on Fort Lewis on Friday. Then they'll face the 17th-ranked Colorado Mesa on Sunday. Let's get, out, let's get out of that heat and head indoors. The Roadrunners volleyball team holds a 7-5 and five record and looks to get back on the winning side of things as they fell to 21st ranked Regis last week. MSU Denver played them tough, but it was not enough as they just barely fell short in the match 3-2. I think that, you know, what I told them is I thought we played with a lot of effort and passion tonight, and we played hard. Um, you know, there's a couple things we just need to get better at from a volleyball perspective, and, and we need to get better at finishing things, um, going from start to finish and being the same team from start to finish. So, you know, while I was really pleased with our effort, I think it's, you know, we know exactly what we need to do to get them the next time. Guess who? Right on cue, Raina Bang scores her eighth goal of the season. Raina Banks has scored nine goals in just six games this season. She leads the RMAC in goals and points. 
and is second in NCAA Division II with 18 points. So she's certainly one in a group of great players that um, are committed and compelled in achieving what they want to achieve for herself and for the program. Um, I think I'm really just playing free. Like I just feel like I don't feel like it's a struggle for me to score goals or I don't feel like my team is putting pressure on me. Um, and then my teammates are just amazing. So I mean, when you have a great team behind you, it's really, really easy to score goals. It really is. Banks herself can't even believe she has nine goals this early in the season. <laughs> I really can't. It feels so surreal. My teammates are doing an amazing job getting me the ball. So <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I try to put uh, working every day, you know, using different things. I don't try to like work on anything specific, but if it comes, I just try to make it as natural as possible. That way in the games, it'll, it won't be forced or I'll just be, oh, I've done this before. You know, it's basically muscle memory. So I just, you know, every day I practice, my teammates push me and they put me in different situations. So I mean, every day. Her training and her teammate are a big role in how she has been performing this season. Oh God, I don't want to make that promise, but I mean, I try. If my team keeps putting me in these positions, I mean, it's easy. Like, I just have to finish. Like, that's all. I have the easiest job. They have the job that, that they have to keep people at the back of the net because if I score and they score, it doesn't mean anything, you know. So they're doing a really, really good job defensively. And I'm, I mean, I'm trying to score in every game if that if it happens, it happens. Well, that's all the time we have on the Met Report today. Don't forget to tune in every Friday on Campus Channel 20 and Comcast Channel 58. And make sure to follow us for more on the latest news on Facebook, Instagram, and at MyMetMedia.com. Thank you.